Good evening. The Scottish Parliament is unlikely to give consent to any more Brexit legislation until the convention underpinning devolution is reformed. So says the Scottish Government. The First Minister said that the need for consent should be enshrined in law. Nick Erdley reports from Guernsey. Seemingly a world away from heated Brexit debate, the Cam of Guernsey and the Channel Islands, the venue for today's summit of governments. Nicola Sturgeon's first talks with UK ministers since she accused them of ripping up the conventions behind devolution. I'm not going to hide uh, at all from the fact that, you know, the UK and Scottish governments have had a serious disagreement. David Liddington says the UK government has the power to act alone, but the Welsh First Minister backed Ms Sturgeon, saying consent is fundamental, and the Irish PM says trust needs legal backing. The Scottish government says it now won't back any other key Brexit bills until devolution is reformed, and the First Minister wants the need for Holyrood's approval to be enshrined in law. Possibly doing what the Smith Commission uh, recommended uh, a few years ago, which is actually embed it properly in statute so that it's not just uh, down to the whim of the UK government whether it's respected or not. The UK government says it will continue to seek consent. That's through the Sewell Convention. But it's worried about giving anyone a veto. We are going to continue to apply Sewell to all new primary and secondary legislation that comes forward relating to Brexit. Um, so what we want is to get agreement from Welsh and Scottish colleagues on a pragmatic way forward that works for people in all parts of the UK. Both sides say they want to repair relations, but constitutional politics is seldom calm just now, and achieving that will be easier said than done. Nick Erdley reporting Scotland, Guernsey. An Aberdeenshire family is calling for an apology after they were investigated for child abuse when in fact their baby had an allergy to milk. Six-week-old Callan was diagnosed with colic, but when marks appeared on his face, he was taken to hospital and his father detained by police. Rebecca Curran reports. Happy and healthy, but just weeks ago, an undiagnosed allergy to milk left this baby in hospital and his family under investigation. When we went into the hospital, we straight away knew that this wasn't to do with his health. And we were interrogated by the doctor. We were asked strange questions about Callan. We were told on the Friday um, when we first went in that if we attempted to take our son home, they would phone the police and we'd be arrested. Six weeks later, Natalie's partner was detained by police. She describes the moment she took him to the station. And it was really hard um, because I knew he'd done nothing wrong. He knew I'd done nothing wrong. And it was just really scary. Callan has since been diagnosed with a milk intolerance. The case against his father has been dropped. We'll have to have these child protection laws in place. It, we have to because there are children out there who are being abused. But I believe that there needs to be further testing you know, we, this could have all been resolved a lot quicker had they have just done a simple allergy test. NHS Grampian is now investigating. Police say concerns about children must be taken seriously until the circumstances are established. Rebecca Curran reporting Scotland, Aberdeenshire. The former television presenter John Leslie has been cleared of sexually assaulting a woman celebrating her hen night in Edinburgh. The 53-year-old denied putting his hand down the woman's trousers while the pair were dancing in the Attic nightclub last June. After a two-day trial, the sheriff found the case against Mr Leslie not proven. The family of a child badly burnt by boiling water during an outdoor school activity are planning legal action against Fife Council. Charles Rudalski spent four nights in Edinburgh's Sick Children's Hospital after the accident. Two other children were also injured. You may find some of the images in Katie Hunter's report distressing. 12-year-old Charles is feeling and looking a lot better than he was. He suffered serious burns to his shoulder and his face when a camping kettle exploded during an outdoor extracurricular activity. Charles had to spend four nights in Edinburgh's Sick Children's Hospital. All I heard was a big bang, and then I looked up and there was like water flying towards me. And then I just quickly shut my eyes and then like felt it go on me. His mum says it's been a traumatic time. I feel angry and worried again because, you know, I'm still waiting what happened. 
We no idea how many Mars him got, cause shoulders look bad. Head is, the side is look not so great as well yet. So we're waiting and see what happens. The accident happened at Lumfinnan's primary school in Cowden Beath 10 days ago. It's understood a camping kettle like this one exploded, injuring three children. There's no suggestion at this stage the kettle was faulty. Charles's friend, Ryan Griffin, suffered serious burns on his back. Fife Council says a full investigation into what happened here is currently underway and that its thoughts are with the injured children. Charles's mum fears he may be scarred for life. His family are planning legal action against Fife Council. Katie Hunter, Reporting Scotland, Cowdenbeath. Now let's see what the weather is up to this weekend. Kirstine? Thank you very much, Sally. Good evening to you. Well, many of us have had some brightness and some sunshine today. Although we have had areas of thicker cloud plaguing parts of the north, I think into this evening that will continue to thin and break to leave some decent spells of sunshine to end the day. And a dry night will follow across the board with some clear spells. Again, though, more in the way of cloud drifting into the north during the early hours, producing the odd spot of rain. A chilly night under clear skies, more typically, though, around 7 to 10 Celsius. So into tomorrow and a good deal of cloud across the north of Scotland, producing some light and patchy rain. As we go through the day, though, that will tend to fizzle out and the cloud will thin and break a little to reveal some bright or sunny spells. The very best of the sunshine, though, across central and southern Scotland, lifting temperatures to around 18 to 20 Celsius, always that bit cooler under the cloud with a breeze across the far north. Into tomorrow evening and again the cloud will thin and break further across the north. The best of the sunshine though will remain across central and southern Scotland. For Sunday, a fine day in prospect with the exception of Shetland where we will have cloudier skies. In the sunshine elsewhere though, warming up with temperatures widely around 19 to 23 Celsius. A look ahead to next week. High pressure firmly in charge of proceedings. It's looking dry and sunny and it's going to turn very warm indeed. That's the forecast, Sally. <laughs> Bliss. Thanks very much, Kirstine. And that is Reporting Scotland. I'll be back with the late bulletin just after the 10 o'clock news. Until then, from everyone in the team right across the country, have a very good evening. Bye-bye.